welcome students in the second lecture of environmental engineering uh, let's see what we have seen in the last lecture before beginning our today's proceedings in the last lecture we started with qualities of water qualities of water and then we have seen various parameters there were three parameters physical second was chemical and the third one was biological parameter we have started with physical parameters and under this we have seen we have seen suspended solids uh, what was the instrument used in suspended solids instrument was muffle furnace muffle furnace and what was the limits for suspended solids 500 milligrams per liter was the acceptable limit and uh, 2000 milligrams per liter was the cause for rejection value then we have seen about turbidity we have seen the various impacts of turbid water second was turbidity uh, the instrument used was of these three four of these four types the first one was turbidity rod method in which we have dipped a platinum needle attached to an aluminium rod second one was jackson turbidimeter jackson turbidimeter uh, in this that uh, we have been seeing candle flame the third one was Bayless. Fourth was nephlometer. Nephlometer. Uh, units for these first three. I'm sorry. The units for first three was STU, silica turbidity unit. Why it was used? Because silica was used for calibration. For nephlometer, it was formazine formazine was used uh, for calibration the unit was the best unit for nephrometer was ftu formazine turbine unit now let's start with our today's lecture color color is caused by suspended and dissolved matter in water okay the instrument used is tintometer the instrument is known as tintometer it is also a color matching technique now uh, in the previous turbidity, we have seen the instrument was calibrated by addition of silica and the unit was known as STU, silica turbidity unit. Now, in color, the standard unit is obtained by addition of platinum in the form of chloroplatinate ion in 1 liter of pure water. What I am saying is, in 1 liter, platinum is added in form of form of chloroplatinate ion chloroplatinate ion that's all what is required for this tintometer you have to remember this tintometer and you have to remember the name of the instrument that is tintometer and the value of the acceptable limit and cause for rejection value you should learn this 5 tcu and 25 tcu tcu is called as true color units one more thing uh, the color is induced by either dissolved solid or suspended solids or dissolved solids uh, that's all what about uh, color now let's move forward with next quality parameter that is taste and order now the instrument used for taste and order is osmoscope osmoscope the instrument name is osmoscope and just keeping the discussion very confined to the syllabus of gate engineering so i'm just covering what is very important for your subject and just skipping which is not required so you have to remember apparatus name and the unit that is threshold oxidation number this unit is known as threshold oxidation 
number. Now, how it is used is suppose this is our test sample, this is test sample, and this is a sample of pure water. It is sample of pure water. Now, what we do is we continue add pure water in this test sample. Like suppose this test sample was of 40 ml. We have added pure water of 40 ml. Now what will happen? This will be diluted sample. This is our diluted sample with volume of 80 ml. Now again we will add 40 ml of water. We will again add pure water pure water 40 ml and then we will again get a diluted sample of 120 ml. We will continue doing this till the point that hardly taste and order gets detected, gets detected. That means uh, we keep on tasting it and will reach up to a limit where we cannot detect the taste and order present in water. That volume will be preferred and corresponding to that will obtain that threshold oxidation number. Uh, this is also known as dilution ratio. Let's see, like what I'm saying is, uh, suppose this is your threshold oxidation number. This is called as dilution ratio. Threshold oxidation number is also known as dilution ratio. Now, if we are talking about dilution ratio, we can write it as volume of dissolved sample. Dissolved sample free from taste and order. Volume of dissolved sample free from taste and order divided by volume of test sample. Uh, I'll just explain you once again. Suppose this was our test sample. This was pure water. We obtained a diluted sample. And then we again added pure water. We again obtained a diluted sample. We'll again add pure water and we'll continue this until and unless this taste and order doesn't get identified. Now, the volume of this test sample, the initial test sample that we have taken will be kept over here, will be kept here. And this volume, volume of dissolved sample free from taste and order is taken as 200. Why did this 200 is taken is because we obtain, we result into a diluted sample of 200 ml by decreasing the amount of test sample so that ultimately we reach up to 200 ml the final volume should be 200 ml and at that point the taste and order the taste and order doesn't get identified so for question purpose uh, as soon as you see the question in the question if the question asks that you have to find this threshold oxidation number or oxidation uh, dilution ratio simply keep 200 in the place of diluted sample volume of diluted sample and this value would be given to you volume of test sample you can find easily threshold oxidation number now moving further uh, acceptable limit is 1 ton and phosphor ejection value is 3 ton that is 3 threshold oxidation number now this one ton, what does this one ton means? This means that without dilution, without dilution, it must be free from taste and order. It must be free. It must be free from taste and order. We don't need to add any pure water sample. The water should be for acceptable limit, it should not be diluted. 
it itself should be free from patient order and cause for rejection value is 3 ton that is completely rejected when dilution is more than 3 times completely rejected completely rejected if dilution is 3 times dilution is 3 times this is the meaning of this 3 times now the next quality parameter is temperature. This was, this is our last uh, physical water quality parameter. Uh, temperature affects the chemical and biological reactions. As you all know, for any reaction, the temperature is the governing factor for the rate of reaction. So that's what this point says. And for every 10 degrees Celsius, it doubles the biological activity. For every, every 10 degrees Celsius increase in temperature, biological activity gets doubled gets doubled biological activity and for normal water supplies the temperature should be between 10 to 25 degrees Celsius that's all all about this uh, temperature quality parameter now moving forward to chemical water quality parameter this is one of the important points in this you can expect lots of numericals numerical is mostly from this one hardness and alkalinity rarely you can find uh, this total dissolved solids numerical and rest all are theoretical so let's begin with total dissolved solids now to what are total dissolved solids the total solids present in water is known as Total dissolved solids present in water is known as total dissolved solids. Now, exact amount of dissolved solid cannot be determined. So, only approximate analysis can be done. Now, how it is done? It is done using instrument known as di-ionic tester. Di-ionic tester. This is the instrument. Now, how this instrument looks like is, I'll just show you. Uh, this looks like this. This is an electrode. electrode. This carries positive charge. This carries negative charge. This is water level. It is attached to a voltmeter. Yep. Now, the water will contain either positive or negative solids present in water. They might be positively charged or negatively charged. Now, this one, just a second. Yeah. Now, when we pass current through it, the positive charge will get deposited over here. They get deposited here and the negative will get deposited over here. That's all what, what's the working of dynamic tester is. And by measuring the electrical conductivity or specific conductance of water, the analysis of TDS can be done. Actually, specific conductance is the ability of water to conduct electricity. Conductance is ability of water to conduct electricity. So this is total dissolved solids. Mainly you will get uh, a direct formula is there to calculate this total dissolved solid for numerical purpose because that's our scoring part. Yeah, the formula is this electrical conductivity. Just learn it by heart. You will get direct value to substitute and get the answer. Just mark it as important. Electrical conductivity in micro mohm per centimeter at 25 degrees Celsius into 0 0.65 to give TDS in milligrams per liter. You should remember it's micro, okay? Micro mohm. Now, it is an, as I said, you it is an approximate method because concentration of those ions which are not present in ionic form cannot be determined using this method. Now, 
uh, one of the major important chemical water quality parameter that is alkalinity in this topic mostly we will get numericals numericals for numerical purpose this topic is very important some small direct theory also but for numerical it is very very important it is one of the most favorite topic of gate this alkalinity and hardness almost every second year or the next year you will get one numerical from this alkalinity now what is alkalinity alkalinity it is defined as quantity of ions quantity of ions in water that will react to neutralize hydrogen ions that will neutralize hydrogen ions thus we can also say it is the ability of water to neutralize acid isn't it we can say it, it is measurement of ability of water to neutralize acids now alkalinity can be of these three types carbonate uh, alkalinity can be divided into these three types actually these are the ma major constituents of alkalinity these are major constituents and these are minor constituents these are only few examples of minor constituents it can be many more but major is only because of these three this one is called carbonate alkalinity this is called bicarbonate alkalinity bicarbonate and this one is called, called as caustic alkalinity caustic alkalinity now moving forward actually uh, a water can be alkaline because of any minerals present because of minerals or or any dissolved gases any dissolved gases can make water alkaline for example not all dissolved gases and some dissolved gases make water alkaline for example let's see if there is carbon dioxide present in water what it will do is it will react to form this carbonic acid this is called as carbonic acid now this carbonic acid will further disso dissolve into dissociate into this bicarbonate ion this bicarbonate ion again gets dissociated into carbonate ion now this carbonate ion will react with water to form bicarbonate ion again you can see it's again forming bicarbonate ion plus release of hydroxide OH minus now what is this OH minus it will definitely increase the pOH value that is makes water alkaline makes water alkaline now this OH minus this reaction is not always possible in forward direction because it is mostly moving towards backward direction but if algae is present in water it will utilize this bicarbonate ion this bicarbonate ion it will utilize this bicarbonate ion and when it will utilize this bicarbonate ion it will make the reaction move in forward direction and when the equation will move in forward direction it will release hydroxide OH minus ion that will make water alkaline okay so we have seen how dissolved gases increase the pOH value and makes water alkaline now when algae now we can also claim as if algae is present in water if algae is present in water due to increase of pOH that is water getting alkaline the pH of water will be around 9 to 10 9 to 10 if algae is found if algae is found in water pH will be around 9 to 10 moving forward what will the impact first of all as alkaline alkalinity will definitely impart bitter taste to water isn't it it will impart bitter taste to water now 
the major issue with this alkalinity is and why it's being removed in the treatment process is this carbonate uh, these all these major constituents that is carbonate bicarbonate and hydroxide ion this will cause incrustation that is deposition of precipitation like suppose if calcium is calcium ions and is present in water it will react with carbonate to give calcium carbonate now this downward arrow shows precipitation that means it has settled down calcium carbonate it is precipitated now how alkalinity is measured you must have done the test for alkalinity in your btec uh, let's recall it what we have studied in our btec how this uh, Uh, test was conducted for the measurement of alkalinity what we do is we actually titrate it we titrate an acid in the presence of some indicator to find out the alkalinity value suppose this is our tube and uh, this is titrant this is titrant it has got markings over here these are markings now this is marking of 100 ml suppose this is the level of titrant now the titrant used is 0.02 normal sulfuric acid for alkalinity sulfuric acid is used as titrant this is our water sample in which which, con which contains unknown parameters now we'll add indicators to it because in titration what we do we add some indicator to identify how much quantity of acid is being used so indicator now indicators used for this two indicators actually we use one is phenolphthalein phenolphthalein and second is methyl orange second one being used is methyl orange now phenolphthalein is initially phenolphthalein is initially colorless colorless now when we add phenolphthalein in water it would be colorless now we'll keep on titrating it and when the uh, phenolphthalein the end color would be it turns to pink after titration we'll stop our experiment as soon as we obtain a pink color so we can say is it's initially colorless which turns to pink the ph working range of phenolphthalein is 8.6 to 2.10.3 this is our second indicator methyl orange methyl orange is initially orange in color that means as soon as we uh, at this methyl orange the entire sample would get converted into orange color and after titration it turns to yellow turns to yellow color now the working range of this is 2.8 2.8 to 4.8 initially it's orange and turns to yellow color working ph range is 2.8 to 4. i'll just recall it once again what we have done uh, in for alkalinity we take a titrant that is sulfuric acid is used as titrant and then we carry water which carries different parameter unknown parameters like uh, carbonate bicarbonate and caustic alkalinity we add two indicators phenolphthalein and methyl orange to it now suppose if titrant used for phenolphthalein is pml suppose uh, up to here just a second i just change the color so that you can clearly understand it suppose till here we have used for phenolphthalein this much ml of titrant and we found pink color okay we'll stop that means this first indicator work is finished now we'll add methyl orange to the sample now when this methyl orange is entered into the sample the entire sample would be get converted into orange color now we'll keep in 
keep on titrating it until and unless we reach up to the sample we titrate it and reach the sample and the sample this titration will be finished when we reach yellow color suppose that quantity used uh, suppose up to here titration was finished this was pml and uh, the entire used was mml this much acid was used here so for this what would to be m minus p this much amount will be used here for titration of methyl orange now before moving further let's recall our class 10th concept of molecular weight and uh, number of gram equivalent weight just to recall it i will repeat it for you yeah now what we write molecular weight how we write it molecular weight molecular weight is equal to weight of 1 mole of compound weight of 1 mole now this can be written as summation of all the atomic weights for example if we say weight of weight of 1 mole calcium carbonate what we can write is for calcium we can write 40 plus for carbon 12 plus oxygen 16 3 of 48 that is 16 plus 3 what will get 100 grams this is the molecular weight for calcium carbonate similarly if we write for carbonate ions what it would be it would be 12 plus 48 that is equal to 60 grams for SCO3 minus that is bicarbonate is 1 plus 12 plus 48 that is equal to 61 grams for sulfuric acid is what it be for sulfuric acid 2 plus 32 plus 16 64 that turns out to be 98 grams sulfate if we write for sulfate SO4 2 minus that would be 32 plus 16 plus 64 turns out to be 96 grams now why I am telling for all this is because you will be using these values again and again now this was about the molecular weight now what if we want to write equivalent weight what we write equivalent weight can you recall it what is equivalent weight equivalent weight is equal to molecular weight divided by valency for calcium carbonate it would be 100 by 2 that is 50 for carbonate would be 60 by 2 for bicarbonate would be 61 by 2 oh sorry it would be 61 by 1 yes, it would be 61 by 1 for sulfuric acid would be 98 by 2 for sulfate would be 96 by 2 Okay, this was about equivalent weight. Now, moving further, what we'll write as number of moles. What is number of moles? Number of moles is equal to given weight, given weight of compound like carbon, calcium carbonate, bicarbonate, anything. Number of moles would be given weight divided by molecular weight that will give number of moles now what will be equivalent weight equivalent weight which we have seen it is molecular weight by valency now what will write number of number of gram equivalent weight gram equivalent Gram 
number of gram equivalent is equal to given weight divided by equivalent weight given weight by equivalent weight okay Given weight by equivalent weight. This one you will be using very very often to solve almost all the numericals. This one will be used. Why it is used? We'll see it quite soon. Just mark it. Number of given equivalent weight. Was it clear? Now, why we am saying this one is important because. One gram, okay. Let's see in other slide. Yeah. One gram equivalent, gram equivalent of anything. One gram equivalent of anything, any compound is equal to one gram equivalent of any other thing. One gram equivalent of anything is equal to one gram equivalent of any other thing. Uh, what I am saying is, let's suppose if one gram, one gram equivalent react reacts with one gram equivalent to give one gram equivalent of product. Now you can see one gram equivalent of anything. This also one gram, one gram, one gram. Let us let us understand it by an example. Suppose if I write equation for this sulfur reaction with hydrogen to form sulfuric acid. Okay. Now. Uh, now we can write number of moles for this hydrogen is 2 moles for sulfate is 1 mole for sulfuric acid is also 1 mole. So it uh, the given weight will be 2 grams for this. This would be given weight 2 grams 96 and 98 grams. Now if we want to write gram equivalent number of grams equivalent. What we can write number of gram equivalent is equal to given weight uh, sorry this is uh, equivalent weight number of gram equivalent is equal to given weight by equivalent weight so what we can write number of gram equivalent for this it would be 2, here would be 2, and here also it would be 2. You can just calculate it. We are in crunch of time, so I am just leaving it up to you. You can calculate it. Gram equivalent. Sorry. It's gram equivalent. Now we can also write 2, 2. We can reduce it to 1 to make it of same unit. 1 gram equivalent. 1 gram equivalent. And this is also one gram equivalent. So you can see one gram equivalent of one thing reacts with one gram of one gram equivalent of other thing to always result into a one gram equivalent of product. This is true for all the compounds. Now to understand this concept and its application, let's see it through an illustration. Okay. Let us suppose in a question you are given with. A sample contains carburet ion 420 grams. 420 grams. It contains uh, 244, 244 gram of bicarbonate ion. 
these are all the constituents of any water sample it's given in the question and for hydroxide is for hydroxide is 68 gram now you are required to find number of gram equivalent number of gram equivalent now how you will write you will write number of gram equivalent of carbonate co3 2 minus or you will write it is equal to given weight given weight by equivalent weight given weight is given 420 grams now what would be equivalent weight equivalent weight would be molecular weight by balancing what will be molecular weight for carbonate ion for carbonate what would be molecular weight we have seen in the previous slide it's 60 for carbonate or it is 60 for carbon it's 12 plus for oxygen it's 60 into 348 that equals to 60 for carbonate Uh, it's 12 plus 48 now what you can write it is it will come out to be 40 gram equivalent now i said you one gram equivalent of one thing is equal to one gram equivalent of any other thing uh, we always represent alkalinity in the terms of gram equivalent of uh, gram equivalent of calcium carbonate we always represent into this form because one gram equivalent of any one thing is equal to other thing. So for carbonate, if you want to write, it's 14 gram equivalent of carbonate or you can write it as 14 gram equivalent of calcium carbonate. Similarly, what you will write for bicarbonate ion? You will write it to 44 divided by equivalent weight equivalent weight would be molecular weight divided by valency uh, for bicarbonate ion molecular weight is 61 valency is 1 so this will give you 4 gram equivalent of calcium carbonate okay now the next one is for hydroxide for hydroxide ion how much weight is given the weight is given as 68 grams divided by equivalent weight equivalent weight would be molecular weight by valency molecular weight would be 16 for oxygen and one for 16 for oxygen one for hydrogen so that turns out to be 17 divided by valency valency is one so that will give uh, four gram equivalent of calcium carbonate so how much is total 40 plus 4 plus 4 so you can claim your answer as this was the question now you can claim your answer as answer would be total alkalinity total alkalinity as calcium carbonate is equal to 22 gram equivalent per liter because this in the sample it was given volume was one one liter so it's 22 gram equivalent per liter okay i hope you all must have understood uh, if you still have some doubt you can just pause the video just give it some time and then understand it i will suggest you to take your copy and you try to solve this yourself. We will illustrate it through various numericals. Once we complete this chapter, we will see different numericals and then you, your, you can just root up your concept. So I just recall it, uh, how we have done this question. Uh, for carbonate, given weight was this. For all the constraints, the given weight was given. It was asked to find number of gram equivalent. Given volume was one liter it was given 
So what we have written number of gram equivalent of carbonate. This equals to given weight by equivalent weight. We have calculated different gram equivalent, and now we know one gram equivalent of one thing is equal to other thing. So we have represented in the terms of calcium carbonate all the compounds. Now to find total alkalinity, the major alkalinity is because of these three ions. Because of these three ions, we have simply added up. We have received fourteen four eighteen eighteen four twenty two gram equivalent per liter. Now moving further, further. Now, the next topic is alkalinity. Like, uh, what actually happens in this alkalinity? We we'll understand it through a graph. I said you why we add two indicators phenolphthalein and methyl orange. Actually, in the analysis of alkalinity, uh, we assume that caustic alkalinity, caustic alkalinity that is OH minus. And bicarbonate alkalinity, that is SCO three minus, they exist at different pH. They exist at different pH. This is the assumption in the analysis of alkalinity. Now, what happens is, okay, this is our graph. This is our pH. This is ten, eight point three. This is four point five. Now, what we have seen in the indicator, like initially we add, uh, we titrate it using phenolphthalein, and the volume used was, this is volume. This is pH. Volume used was pmL. We have seen. It was pmL, and if the titration gets completed, the entire volume was mmL. This is m. Now, during this first, when we add phenolphthalein during the working range of phenolphthalein, what happens is during in between this pH, the entire hydroxide ion, this hydroxide alkalinity, gets satisfied. Now. Can carbonate alkalinity gets converted into SCO three minus? Okay. In between this pH, during the working of phenolphthalein, all the caustic alkalinity gets satisfied, gets converted into water, and carbonate alkalinity gets converted into bicarbonate alkalinity. Now we know there are three major alkalinities present in water: caustic, carbonate, and bicarbonate. So there would also be bicarbonate alkalinity, SCO three minus. Now this gets satisfied to form carbonic acid, H two CO three. Now, uh, all the alkalinity are converted, but still. We are left with this bicarbonate alkalinity, which was converted due to carbonate ion. So, this will also get satisfied. This one we react with H plus to form bicarbonate acid. Two CO three. Now we can say it is a conversion of up to the pH of eight point three conversion of entire caustic alkalinity and half of carbonate alkalinity. Is done, and during the pH of up to pH of 4.5, entire bicarbonate alkalinity and the bicarbonate alkalinity that was produced due to the conversion of carbonate also get satisfied. I'll repeat it once again. What happens here is up to the pH of 8.3. Neutral neutralization of all the carb this caustic alkalinity takes place. Up to just again, I'll just change the color so that you can understand it better. Yeah, entire caustic alkalinity gets neutralized up to the pH of 8.3. Also, carbonate alkalinity gets converted into bicarbonate. So we can say half of the entire carbonic uh, this carbonate. Alkalinity gets neutralized. 
Now, bicarbonic alkalinity gets satisfied, gets neutralized up to the pH of 4.5. And also, the bicarbonate alkalinity that was produced due to the conversion of carbonate into bicarbonate also gets neutralized up to the pH of 4.5. This was the reason why two indicators of different pH range was used. Initially for this range, phenolphthalein was used. Phenolphthalein was used. And here, methyl orange was used. Methyl orange. Now still, if you have some doubt, uh, in the slides, you can easily read it out and then clear out, clear out your doubts. What we have seen, just revise it through the sentences. Conversion of carbonate to bicarbonate is essentially completed at pH 8.3. Okay. As I said, up to pH 8.3, this carbonate completed. But resultant bicarbonate is requires some amount of acid for neutralization, which takes place in this range. Now, if uh, just to sum, if we want to summarize it, let's write like this. If, uh, yeah. Suppose this is alkalinity, this is pH, this is volume of acid. Volume of acid used. Alkalinity is yeah. Caustic alkalinity plus half of carbonate. And second one is half carbonate plus half carbonate plus. During up to the pH range of 8.3, what happens? Entire caustic alkalinity and half of carbonate alkalinity because half carbonate alkalinity is converted into bicarbonate ions. So we can say up to this pH range, these two alkalinity gets neutralized. Half of carbonate and half of caustic alkalinity. Volume of acid used was PML. Volume was PML. Now, uh, for this, when in the entire process for up to pH range of 4.5, what happens is entire caustic alkalinity, half of carbonate ions and bicarbonate ions. This was done and also half carbonate ions, which was half of this bicarbonate ions. Sorry, half of carbonate ions. Yeah, half carbonate ions that was produced due to the conversion of carbonate into bicarbonate. So, up to this pH range, entire alkalinity gets satisfied. The volume used was N. Now, what we can write is, see, if P is equals to 0, I will just explain it with graph once again. This was P, this was N. What happens here was, uh, convert neutralization of caustic alkalinity, carbonate alkalinity, half of carbonate alkalinity that was converted into bicarbonate. Here was bicarbonate alkalinity. That was converted into carbonic acid, and half of this SU3 minus was also converted as to CO3. Yeah. Now, if P is equals to zero, in this sentence, what this says, if P is equal to zero, total alkalinity is bicarbonate alkalinity. That means, suppose this was PML. If this P shifts here, means no amount of acid was used during neutralization of this process. No volume was used. What we can say? We can directly say only bicarbonate alkalinity was present. Because if these alkalinity would have been present, they would definitely require some amount of acid during titration process. If value of P is 0, we can say only bicarbonate alkalinity is present. 
Now, what does second say? If P is equal to M. Now, if P is equal to M, that is M comes here. If M comes here, that means the volume required up to P is the total volume required during titration. If M comes here, what will happen? That means there is no bicarbonate alkalinity. If there is no bicarbonate alkalinity, what it says? There would be only caustic alkalinity. This one. Why only this one? Why not this one? If this one was also present, then it would have been converted into bicarbonate alkalinity. And again, this would have required some quantity of acid for titration. But here, as we know, the quality, the quantity used was zero because M has come up to P. P is equals to M. So we can only say only caustic alkalinity was present. Now, if P is equals to M by two, in this one it says if P is equal to M by two, only alkalinity is carbonate alkalinity. If P is M by two, that means only this one. This one would be left out. Carbonate alkalinity because half is used here and half is used here. If P is less than M by two, if P is less than M by two, this one, it is less than M by two. That means uh, there is no because half is here, half was used here, half was used here. If P is less than M by two, we can say only carbonate alkalinity is uh, uh, predominant species are carbonate and bicarbonate. Carbonate and bicarbonate because here was also present. Mostly, you just need to remember these three, and then you can see this one. As I have explained, the first three similarly goes the other two one. If P is greater than M by two, that means predominant species are carbonate and bicarbonate. That means this range one, the first range, this one, or the fourth one. Now, is it clear? Shall we move forward? Yeah. Now moving further, let's see the limits of alkalinity. Acceptable limit is 200 milligrams per liter. Cost for ejection value is 600 milligrams per liter. 200 and 600. Just remember it. We'll get direct to just take out this one. Now, if you still have some doubts, as soon as we will solve numerical at the end of the chapter, you can. Just clear out all your doubts, okay? Just don't worry. Just understand the basic concepts. Once we solve numerical, you will understand the application, how we are using it. Now moving forward, the next chemical water quality parameter is pH. You all must have studied about the pH. It is scale which is used to indicate acidity or basicity. If pH is less than 7, it is acidic. If it is greater than 7, it is basic. And if it's equals to 7, it's neutral. That all we know. Now we can say pH equals to minus log molar concentration of H plus. Now this H plus, this H plus is in moles per liter. Just do remember it. We'll get direct numericals. Simply you have to find out pH. Everything would be given. We'll find out the pH value. Now we can also say pH is plus pH is equals to 40. Now, if pH starts decreasing, if you say pH is decreasing, what will come in? That acidity increases. Isn't it? Because we will be reaching towards from 7 to 1, acidity would be increasing. If pH increases, we will say basicity increases. If it because why increase it because it will go beyond seven, so basicity will increase. Now, how pH is measured? It is also measured using color indicators, phenolphthalein and bromothiamol blue. These are the two color indicators: phenolphthalein and bromothiamol blue. Now, one important thing is if we use bromothiamol blue. The instrument used is known as aquascope. This is theoretical question. It is called as aquascope. pH is determined also using potentiometer using calum electrode. Okay. This is just some theory about this. 
Now, to end up our today's proceedings, let's recall what we have studied today. And yeah, before then that, let's see the pH range of this pH, the working range. The permissible limit, the limit for drinking water is 7 to 8.5. Most probably it should be around 7 and rejection limit is less than 6.5 and greater than 9.2. You'll find direct, this is one of the very famous question for state engineering services examinations. So let's quickly summarize what we have done today. Firstly, we started with color. We have seen this color parameter. Uh, for this, uh, the acceptable limit was what it was 5 TCU. And cause for rejection value was 25 TCU. 25 TCU. Uh, the instrument was just recall it what it was it was tintometer. Tintometer. Then what we have seen the next after colors we have seen taste and order. Taste and order. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, in color, we what we calibrated using addition of platinum. Addition of platinum in form of fluoroplatinate ion. In form of fluoroplatinate ion. Now, second one was taste and order this one apparatus used was osmoscope osmoscope uh, what was taste and order one ton this was one ton and the cost for rejection value was three ton for taste and order then further we have seen about temperature this was the third parameter this was fourth parameter and this was fifth parameter then we have started our chemical water quality parameters under this we have seen the first one was dissolved solids dissolved solid in this we have seen one very important formula of calculation that was electrical conductivity conductivity what was the unit it was a micro mole per centimeter at 25 degree centigrade this was to be multiplied with 0 0.65 to obtain TDS value in milligrams per liter. Now the instrument used was diionic tester. This was the instrument. Now moving further, what was the next topic we started? We have seen very important parameter of alkalinity alkalinity we have seen there are major constituents of alkalinity is carbonate bicarbonate and caustic alkalinity these are major constituents now this is called carbonate this is called bicarbonate this is called caustic alkalinity then we have seen the impacts of alkalinity, incrustation was caused, impact we have seen of alkalinity. Then we have mm -hmm. seen how measurement is done. For measurement, uh, what was the titrant? Titrant was, we used an acid that was 0 0.02 normal sulfuric acid. And we used two indicators, phenolphthalein, phenolphthalein and methyl orange methyl orange was used as indicator uh, phenolphthalein was the ph working range of phenolphthalein was 8.6 to 10.3 methyl orange was 2.8 to 4.2 and then we have seen how number of gram equivalent was considered number of gram equivalent concept we have seen like one gram of equivalent of one thing is equals to number of one gram equivalent of any other thing and then we have moved forward and then we have seen that graph this graph we have seen in this up to the pH range of 8.3 how entire caustic alkalinity was neutralized half carbonate alkalinity was neutralized why half because some part was converted into bicarbonate alkalinity now up to the pH of 2 point uh, sorry up to pH range of 4.5 entire bicarbonate alkalinity was satisfied and apart from that 
the half carbonate alkene which was converted into bicarbonate alkene that was also satisfied H2CO3 and then we have seen various relations like if P is equals to M then OH alkalinity was present if P is equals to M if uh, P was zero that means only bicarbonate alkalinity was present if P was zero what was P? P was here and M was here this M is from zero to M this entire volume now if P is equals to M by 2 we have seen carbonate alkalinity was present if P was greater than M by 2 then predominant was hydroxide and carbonate alkalinity so 3 2 minus it's not like uh, bicarbonate is not present bicarbonate is present but this this was predominant this was predominant and then we have seen P if P is less than M by 2 then carbonate CO3 to minus and bicarbonate alkalinity was present we have seen then the acceptable limit for alkalinity was for alkalinity what was the acceptable limit it was 200 milligrams per liter and phosphor ejection value was 600 milligrams per liter and then a small concept of pH we have seen pH working range of pH was around 7 to 8.5 and phosphor rejection value was less than 6 point 6 point 5 right 6 point 5 to and greater than 9 point 2 not 2 less than 6 point 5 and greater than 9 point 2 this was phosphor rejection value now in next unit in the coming lecture we'll be seeing continue with our this chemical water quality parameters till then just revise all the notes and yeah in the last lecture i did said you to prepare small notes now start preparing it just notify all the important data that you come across and once i say you to solve numericals do practice it because that will strengthen your concepts thank you